historically, the contribution of academic institutions to education always depended on individuals. There was always somebody who was committed or was crazy enough to devote time to it or original enough to innovate or something of that sort. It cannot be done by an obligation because some of the best scientists in the world are terrible teachers. So it's not going to happen by some kind of uh, order of somebody or by some kind of uh, commitment. The only way to change the educational system is by teams consisting of active teachers, professional educators, active scientists, and people who train in the field of science education. And there is such a field. Uh, the Weizmann Institute, for instance, has a department dealing with it and a PhD program to train people not to be school teachers and not to be research scientists, but to be experts and developers and innovators in science education in general. Developing new curricula, new textbooks, new experiments, new systems, new ideas, etc. But none of the groups that I've just mentioned could do it by itself. And if one goes to outstanding research institutes in the world, whether it's, let's say, Rockefeller University in, in uh, New York or the Max Planck Institutes, of which there are so many and they're so excellent, or uh, some of the great institutions of France, or now the Institute of Science and Technology in Austria, all of these institutions could do it, should do it, in my opinion, but it has to be one of their priorities. And it has to be a priority in the sense that if one, two, three, five professors decide that they are dedicated to it, they can create an avalanche by attracting others. That has been our experience in Israel and at the Weizmann Institute. But it needs a trigger of one or two people. At the Weizmann Institute, it started by an absolutely outstanding physicist, uh, Professor Amos de Chalit, who unfortunately died at the age of 43 many, many years ago. But he was committed to this. And he understood it long before we reached the so-called age of knowledge or age of science and technology knowledge. And he started several different projects and several different activities. And then there were some of us who continued and, and were his successors and it rolled on, and the current leadership of the Weizmann Institute continued the tradition, and we have been really an instrument of change for science education in Israel. And if you then ask me, am I happy with the way science education is continuing in Israel? My answer is an absolute clear no. We have done a lot, but it's not even half of what should have been done. There's a lot to do and a lot to advance, and we are far from being a really good system. But that's the way it is all over the world, and uh, I hope that more and more scientists will get involved with it. If somebody would ask me what should change in Israeli education, I will give an answer that will probably take a week, and I'm not sure that I will finish by then, and I'm not sure at all that everything I will say will be correct because I believe that in education there are no quick solutions, there are no clear solutions, there are no one-line solutions, but there are a few things, uh, for instance, this is special to Israel, but it's, I'm sure it's common to other countries, nothing is worse in education than frequent changes. If you change the system every year or every two years or every three years, Every three years, a new manager comes, or a new politician, or a new minister of education, and has a reform in order to leave impact on the system. And such reforms frequently drive nuts the teachers and the students and the school principals and the entire system. They usually don't do any good. Usually, the next minister is reversing the reform of the previous minister. And uh, in Israel, it's, it's horrifying. 
18 year olds who are doing the matriculation this year since they entered first grade at the age of six, I think there were about 10 or 11 ministers of education. I mean, this is completely crazy because you cannot manage a system like this. In education, the problem, incidentally in science also, everything you do gives fruits after decades. And by the time the good fruits come, nobody will remember what you have done if it is thanks to you. And if you are making a horrible mistake, the bad results will come after decades. And by the time somebody will pay the price, they will also not remember that it was you. So it is a system without an honest reward. It's a very unfair system. And that is the reason why when you read about the debates of uh, politicians before an election, or when you read the headlines of the newspapers, education is never there. Because it's never urgent. It's never something that you did yesterday and gave results good or bad. What you did yesterday will give results only in 20 years. And uh, this is almost a problem. With, I mean, this is really a failure of democracy, if you wish. But uh, I don't know if this is the right moment and the right place to discuss the failures of democracy. And I'm not against democracy, of course. But we have to understand that there are certain problems that cannot be solved with such a system in a fruitful way. Mm -hmm.